without further ado, I would like to turn it over to James Scott, who needs no introduction. Thank you. I want to welcome uh, everyone, and I first want to thank what I have come collectively to call the Food Sovereignty Mob for all of the work that they've done to bring this together. We never imagined that there was such a public that uh, would come to event, and it, this event, and we planned it as a small dialogue and look uh, what's happened. Uh, so it's a tribute to the, the fact that the zeitgeist is headed in this direction. Um, the, as you know, food sovereignty is a contested concept, and I, like Henry Bernstein, who uh, authored the first paper in this series, uh, I am a skeptic uh, in terms of food sovereignty, um, but not quite for the same reasons as Henry. I have uh, several objections to food sovereignty. The first objection is that uh, the word's too hard to spell. Uh, sovereignty is just, um, right, I have to pause every time I write it, uh, and I think we should come up with another term just because uh, it's annoyance, especially to people who are not native speakers of English. Um, so, but if we were to say food security, then we would put ourselves in the world of homeland security and surveillance, and as uh, it was just said, everything is being recorded. Um, <laughs> the, um, there's a way, however, in which it seems to me food security is the bedrock of every other right. Um, without it, we are all putty in the hands of those who would give or deny us sustenance. Uh, and if we don't have that security, we're at one level turned into a bunch of servile beggars uh, who are incapable of exercising our independent judgment uh, and will. And the absence of food security is, of course, um, uh, the threat to food security is uh, these days as uh, neoliberalism as much as despots um, that Neoliberalism threatens food security by the huge inequalities and political distortions that it makes possible, by the land grabs, by the innovation of property in life forms, uh, a new, if you like, a commons that has been seized and made into private property, um, and in general, the destruction of common property resources uh, and the privatization of virtually everything. Um, another problem that I have with the term food sovereignty it, is that it gestures in the direction of the nation state as the political unit that is uh, supposed to secure our future. Uh, my impression is that the nation state has not uh, been a very good guarantor of uh, our future, let alone our food security. And national boundaries make absolutely no agroecological sense. A delta nation like Bangladesh uh, needs, if you like, for exchange, a hilly uh, property nearby, which, which they can exchange complementary goods. Uh, you could say Switzerland needs a delta or an estuary in just the same way, that national boundaries uh, are almost always a kind of violation of natural agroecological units of exchange and complementarity. A watershed is often a satisfactory unit of agro-specialization and exchange, but the fact is that rivers are more commonly international boundaries rather than uh, the, uh, recognizing the fact that rivers actually join people. Um, the rivers as boundaries make absolutely no sense. The Rhine, the Danube, the Mekong, the upper delta actually divide uh, groups that are united around the river and around a particular uh, watershed. And of course, it's a very rare nation state that places the subsistence security of its population at the top of its uh, policy agenda. This may be inevitable, but as Amartya Sen, if, we, if one reads Amartya Sen carefully, yes, Amartya Sen says in a, in a nation that is a democracy with a free press, if you have a famine, uh, the state will be under enormous pressure to relieve the famine. 
But he goes on to say that if you have systematic malnutrition and a level of mortality just below a level of uh, a serious famine, this can go on uh, 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 more or less in it, uh, forever uh, and not reach the level of a political explosion that would force even a democratic state to uh, uh, relieve the famine. The, the real problem, and I know it's not much raised here, and perhaps it's politically incorrect um, with food sovereignty, is that it takes for granted a homo sapiens population of over seven billion that it's on its way to nine billion. Um, in the year 1750, there were 750 million Homo sapiens uh, on the planet, and now there are over 7 billion. Um, so if we are talking about invasive species, uh, it seems to me Homo sapiens is the most <coughs> prolific invasive species, and an invasive species that is responsible for the life world of almost any other life form uh, on the planet. It seems to me that we can't talk about foods if our job is to simply provide for all the homo sapiens we can produce. Uh, then uh, we're in something of a paradoxical uh, situation. It's also the case that uh, I was surprised, and I think this is correct, that 80% of the world's calories uh, that are consumed come from just three grains, wheat, rice, and maize. Uh, well, that's completely astounding that we have become, as someone said, we've become canaries or birds, all right? Uh, that from a wide spectrum historical diet, we have become so concentrated on three major grains uh, and the carbohydrates and calories that come from, uh, from those, that it's an extraordinary thing to step back and ask about uh, the food part of food sovereignty and how that has changed historically uh, as well, not to mention meat consumption and uh, other forms of nutrition. Referring to Henry's uh, Bernstein's paper, um, he despairs, he, he, his argument is that there are no peasants anymore, he'll make this argument for himself, um, the, and that they're c petty commodity producers, and I think he's uh, completely right in that respect. Um, but petty commodity producers come in uh, all kinds of forms and produce uh, different commodities under radically different conditions of land tenure, social organization. I think, for example, of the Amish and Mennonite farmers uh, not so very far from Connecticut who um, manage, actually, although they produce for the market, manage to insulate themselves as much as possible from the market for inputs so that if they have uh, 30 cows, they don't actually uh, buy uh, hay and fodder for, they only have as many cows as they can produce off their own land in order to minimize their exposure to market fluctuations. Um, I uh, provisionally, and just to be provocative, would like to make the distinction be between what I would call proletari pro proletarian crops, um, by which I mean these major grains uh, that are relatively easy to grow, can be grown extensively, uh, that store rather well, can be shipped uh, intercontinentally fairly easily, uh, and c can be grown actually pretty efficiently in large units, whether these are public or private, uh, private units. Um, they have important returns to scale. Um, and uh, we could contrast these proletarian crops with what I call petty bourgeois crops. The ideal typical example of a petty bourgeois crop to me is the raspberry. Uh, that is, you can't ship it very far, you can't put more than three or four on top of one another. Uh, no matter what you do, it's not gonna last more than four or five days. It has to be grown close to the, to the place where it's consumed. But the whole range uh, of the, the rest of the spectrum of our entire diet of fruits and vegetables and so on, it seems to me, 
are the zone in which petty commodity production can be enormously productive, is close to the markets at which food is consumed. Um, and we might think of a division of labor between large units, and I said those large units could be either private or public and organized as cooperatives. Uh, I don't mean to uh, prejudge the forms in which they might be produced, but it seems to me they are subject to different scales and different uh, agroeconomic processes than what I call the sort of large portion of our total uh, nutritional uh, uh, needs uh, that come from what I half jokingly, but not entirely half jokingly, call petty bourgeois crops that might be produced by petty commodity producers. I'm, uh, I, I've tried to be conscious of the time. I hope I've. Um, Excellent uh, job. Good. Perfect. Thank you. Model, good behavior. <laughs>